Hello everyone, this is H.S. Yeska here, and it is time for another Hero Spotlight, where I show you the very basics of each and every hero in Heroes of the Storm, and today I'm going to be showing you my main man, Tassadar! Now, for those of you who've been watching the videos on this channel or uh, watching my live streams, you know that I love Tassadar. Look, guys, I know I don't live stream a whole lot, but if you did watch the ones I did, Tassadar is where it's at. He is actually my favorite character in the entire game to play right now. I'm going to be showing you his abilities, kind of giving you a quick overview about him. Not really talking strategy that much because, let's be honest, I'm not the best person to go to for strategy. I think we've known that for a very long time. I mean, look, I'm the captain of Team Low Expectations, so if you're expecting anything, then your expectations are already too high. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and just jump right on in to try him out, and I will show you his ultimates. I will show you all of his abilities, and uh, just kind of tell you what I do like about him. Maybe some strengths and weaknesses. I feel like this is like a, a, a dating website. I'm going to tell you my strengths and my weaknesses and my likes and my dislikes. But uh, here we go. Tassadar, uh, he does ride around on a pony, so he has all normal functionings of a, uh, of a horse. Which, uh, I do like to say that because some of the characters like the Siege Tank and Abathur, they do not use standard horses. Let's go ahead and toggle off the minions. Or toggle them on, I suppose. And let's talk about their spells. Protective Shield. Shields target ally, absorbing 600 damage before breaking. Lasts for 8 seconds. Now, this ability is, like, sick good. Like, amazingly good. So, it, it's pretty straightforward. You just give an ally a shield. There it goes right there. And it will break after uh, 8 seconds. I want to see if they, they spec'd into the talent or not. But, uh... Uh, looks like they did. Normally, that would disappear after 8 seconds. We'll talk about that talent in a little bit, but you can also throw it on buildings. This is something that not a lot of people actually know. Are those Phoenix that are going around that? Uh, they look a lot like Phoenix, that's for sure. But you can throw it down on buildings, which is awesome. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something that is... This spell, guys, is like the best save your ally spell in the game. You basically just spam it like Malfurion. He's being dumb. It's one of those spells, and this is the way I like to look at it, is it forces your allies to be less bad. What I mean by that is your ally decides, hey, I'm about to die. I'm going to stay here longer than I should. And you can throw the shield on there to at least allow them to survive a little bit longer. That ability is super straightforward, which is also what I like about him. Now, this ability is very straightforward as well, and it's awesome. It is called Time Warp. For those of you who play StarCraft 2, you're very familiar with this. 75 mana, area of effect, cooldown is 12 seconds, deals 104 damage per second to enemies in target area, and slows attacks and movement speeds by 35%. I want to say that again. Slows attack and movement speed by 35%. So basically, you always want your enemies to be under this. I'm going to show you what it looks like first. You can see it does have quite a long range. I can walk through it just fine without being slowed down. It is a nice little bubble. It does disappear rather quickly, but it... it in the heat of the moment, it doesn't seem that quick. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, shield Malfurion because he's being bad. And then we're going to go ahead and throw this. And this is such a good way to engage. Lock down somewhere that they can't retreat to. So, if you're predicting that they're going to need to run there, you can throw it down behind them. And that is really the strategy that I use. Is trying to predict where they're going to be. So, right there, he cannot retreat right now. So, if I had an ally who wasn't Malfurion then uh, that'd be bad news for Arthas. Also, if they're attacking your towers and they're barely in range, and then all of a sudden they're trying to get away, you can try and slow them down just a little bit to try and secure the kill. There it goes. So the damage is nice, the slow is nice, and the fact that slows their attack is nice. And there is also some really cool talents for that ability that I'll talk about a little bit later, but it makes time warp even better, as if it's not good enough. Now, this next ability is really good. It will save your butt a lot. Uh, it's my least favorite skill, I would say. Not because it's bad, but just because I like the other two so much. Uh, it is called Void Shift. It costs 75 mana, 20 second cooldown. Tassadar becomes invulnerable and invisible to enemies, and it lasts for two seconds. That is invulnerable and invisible. I know that I'm emphasizing it, but God, Tassadar is seriously so good. So basically, uh, let's say that you're about to get ganked, and you're like, oh, I got to get out of here because Tassadar is quite squishy. You just hit that E key. You go invulnerable and invisible for one, two, and then you come out of the stealth. So it's a good way to juke your opponents, and it's really only like a 20-second cooldown. So you're able to not spam it, but you're able to get out of uh, sticky situations quite often. It is amazing. It saves me all the time. That's why in a lot of my videos, I never actually die because between the bubble and the escape, you can just get away a lot. And uh, you know what? Actually, I guess the uh, Twilight Messiah may be my least favorite talent. Really, I just like all the talents so much that picking a least favorite one is difficult. Uh, Twilight Messiah, 80 mana. It is the heroic ability. 
And uh, this one, this one is a lot of fun. And I will say that both of his heroic abilities are exceptionally strong and exceptionally useful. Tastar gains a 650 point shield. His basic attacks deal 248 damage, and his basic attack splash for 124 additional damage. Lasts for 15 seconds. Now they say it's a Twilight Messiah, but really it's an Archon, baby. You actually turn into an Archon that shoots lightning, just like in StarCraft, just like in Brood War, just like in StarCraft 2, and you. You can own some fools it's pretty epic and of course there's that splash damage as well and it does last for quite some time god it looks so awesome and then uh there is going to be oracle as well greatly increases Tastar's vision radius and allows him to detect enemy heroes lasts for seven seconds so it's a good way to get uh players out of stealth but i am going to go ahead and use it right now boom you can see the the animation there it does increase his vision you can see how far i can actually see it's kind of absurd and uh, you can also use it to detect stealth units. So overall, his utility is actually ridiculous. Like, you can spec into all damage by going for Archon, or you can spec into pure utility by going for Force Wall. This is basically Force Fields, but for Heroes of the Storm, and this is one of the most annoying abilities in the game to go up against. You basically can throw down a wall, and if Arthas were to try and retreat, he could not run through that. And again, versus the bot or something like that, it may not look that exciting, but it has a very, very low cooldown. And uh, it is only 12 seconds, plus it lasts for 3 seconds. And you can basically force your opponents to go exactly where you want them to, which is quite awesome. And really, it's just all about control and survivability for him. So there, you can just spam the abilities, try and get yourself into a good spot. And it, once he tries to retreat, nope, nope, you're staying here, Arthas. Where do you think you're going? As soon as that wall disappears, try and slow him down. Try and also keep him in there so he's taking the damage. And down he goes. So Tassadar, seriously, once you get the hang of him, I, I feel like he's almost overpowered. I have a feeling that Blizzard may be nerfing him. That's just my that's just my inkling. But I will say right now, highly recommend playing as Arthas if and or excuse me, not Arthas, I'm killing Arthas, but as Tassadar, if and when you can. I honestly select him almost always in solo queue just because he's so freaking good. And uh, Arthas, you know, he's kinda getting kinda getting feisty with it. Well, I tried to save you, buddy, but hey, that didn't quite work. And actually, I can kind of show you here. It's kind of dropped the aggro on the bot just because I went invisible. A normal player may have tried to break me out of stealth. Either way, I would be immune to damage for two seconds. So there's that. Now, a lot of the talents of Tassadar completely change how he plays. Some of the some of the uh, some of the the characters in this game, yeah, you get some talents either tanky or more damage, but it doesn't exactly change exactly how they're played. You can change how Tassadar is played based on how the game is going, and I would say he has some of the most versatility out of any of the characters in the game. So let's go ahead and go through the talents. They are a lot of fun. And I love you're pointing out that I do misread a lot. That is true. I am I am an okay reader, but sometimes my accuracy when speaking out loud is not necessarily the best. But at level one, you're able to choose uh, the uh, Regeneration Master. We've talked about this before. Gather three Regeneration Globes from the little mage uh, minions and to permanently grant plus three health per second, and it does stack infinitely. Path of the Wizard, your hero gains an extra five mana and 0.2 mana regen for every level gained. So basically, it's just increasing your overall mana as the game progresses, which is not bad. It's not bad at all. Time Rift increases the damage by 25%. That is the one that I like to get a lot in a standard game. Just because Time Rift is something that you're basically spamming and it already does decent damage. Healing Ward. This is great if you want to be the full support on your team. Place on the ground to heal allies in an area for 2% of their max health every second for 10 seconds. So, of course, that brings them up by 20%. And this is something that you can actually get on a lot of the other support characters as well. It is pretty good on Tassadar, but not my favorite one to choose. Now at level 4... Focus attack. Every five seconds, your next basic attack deals 50% additional damage. And uh, this is something that Tassadar's basic attacks, actually, uh, they start to do a lot of damage if you spec into it. So if you're thinking of going damage Tassadar or Tassa damage, I don't know, a DPS Sadar, I don't know what you want to call him. But uh, if you do want to do that, this is a really good one to get at the beginning just because it will scale as the game goes on. Then there's going to be space jump. Allies that enter your time warp gain 25 percent move speed for 20 seconds now this is interesting because all of a sudden the time warp which is already slowing down your opponent's movement speed slowing down their attack speed and doing damage to them is now also increasing the movement speed of your allies by 20 percent now all of a sudden this becomes not only an offensive but a defensive spell as well and again it's one of those spells that forces your opponents to be less bad and those are spells that i absolutely love they're ones where they're running away too late they're gonna die all of a sudden you swoop in throw down a space jump throw down the uh the 
shield and they are good to go so this is an awesome one to get i get it very very often reinforced structure Pro protective shield is 100 percent stronger and lasts 100 percent longer when cast on structures now this is actually uh, I, I think a lot of the structure related buffs and debuffs people tend to skip just because it doesn't seem good this is pretty intense because the bubble is already exceptionally good so this helps you hold your lane say you're in a lane that's two versus one and your team they need that extra player because they're so bad that they need that extra player in the other lane somewhere else to win that lane having stuff like reinforced structure is actually surprisingly good Promote. Give target allied lane minion plus 200% permanent health and 100% permanent damage. Now, note that this does say lane minion. This does not count for the mercenaries. If this was for mercenaries, then it would be really good. But uh, I've gotten this one before, and I was not that impressed because minions, they're going to die no matter how much you beef them up. So, uh, not a big fan of that one. Now at level 7, you get something that you, or you can get something called Battle Momentum. Basic attacks reduce your ability cooldowns by 5 seconds, or 0.5 seconds, excuse me. So that basically means auto attack means you can cast more stuff. That one's okay. It's just the cooldowns are already so small for Tassadar that I don't really find it to be that important. Then there's going to be Kala's Embrace. If Protective Shield expires, 50% of the shield remains indefinitely. Now, this is one of the talents that I would consider almost broken in that it's awesome because you can just slowly start to stack up your entire team to have these permanent shields. Now, of course, if they take a lot of damage, the shield will go away, but uh, this one's really, really fun for support because there's always something that you can cast to help your team out. So that is normally the one that I personally go get because I like playing at support. Searing Attacks. Activate to increase basic attack damage by 50% for 5 seconds. Attacks cost mana per hit. So I'm going to read that again because it's kind of confusing. Activate to increase basic attack damage by 50% for 5 seconds, but each attack costs mana per hit. So this is if you're really going like DPS Tassadar and you want a, uh, not not like an I win button, but a button that makes you do a lot more damage. That is uh, one to get. I personally don't like it. Call down Mule. Repairs the target structure, granting it health and ammo over 30 seconds. Now what you could do as Tassadar, which would be really, really fun, is go for everything that helps promote buildings. So you could go for reinforced structure as well as call down mule and repairs target structure granting health and ammo over 30 seconds which that one's kind of cool i've never actually seen that one i should actually go for that sometime just to see exactly what it looks like and then these are the two ultimates i showed you twilight messiah and force wall i personally prefer force wall but if you are going for a damage build twilight messiah it is hard to beat man it is so fun now, the, at level 10, you can spell shield. Periodically reduces the damage uh, received from hero abilities by 50%. Stores up to two charges. So, again, that just makes it a little bit harder to kill. Tassadar is already pretty hard to kill. This is a good one to get if your team's really bad and you're trying to carry it a little bit more. Uh, just because it gives you that extra survivability. Distortion Beam. Basic attacks slow enemies by 25% for 1.5 seconds. This one is awesome. It's so freaking good, man. So basically what it does is it makes your attack look like a void ray beam. And you just sit there and channel it on an opponent. And not only is it doing damage, it is also slowing them down. So think of Void Rays. Think of if, if Void Rays had Force Fields. And now all of a sudden you're starting to see just how good Tassadar is. Then there's going to be Scryer. Oracle lasts 3 seconds longer and grants 15% movement speed. So that is really, really, really good. Uh, if... Uh, if you want to kind of beef that one up. I, I still prefer the dis uh, Distortion Beam just because it's so much fun. Shrink Ray. Activate to reduce an enemy hero's damage by 50% and movement speed by 50% for 4 seconds. So, uh, basically, you shrink you shrink ray them you make them tiny and they don't do as much damage or move as fast which is hilarious I've seen that several times now there's gonna be a press pre pressions pre-science uh is pre-science actually a word I don't know look guys I'm not the smartest bulb in the tree I don't even know what that means but at level 16 you can get it either way void shift will automatically activate after Tassadar falls below 15% life this effect has a 60 second cooldown that's kind of if you're too lazy to pay attention to what's going on that will save you uh dimensional shift Move 50% faster and heal for 40 while Void shifted. So I assume that uh, it, it heals you for more than that as it scales up towards level 16 and beyond. Rewind. Activate to reduce the cooldown of your basic abilities by 10 seconds. This one is always a lot of fun. And then Berserk. Activate to increase your attack speed by 50% and movement speed by 10% for 4 seconds. So you can see that if you want to go DPS Tassadar, they give you the tools to do that. Even one of his ultimates is, uh, is very, very beneficial towards that goal. Resurgence of the Storm. Upon on dying revive back at your altar after five seconds this can occur once every 120 seconds so really it's like impossible to keep Tassadar dead if you choose that one it does have a cooldown though uh fury of the storm basic attacks bounce twice to nearby enemies for 50 percent damage which again is just another really good way to increase your damage shadow messiah 
increased damage in Twilight Messiah form by 25% and increases attack range by three. So you kind of get uh, even more stretch Armstrong with that Archon and are able to reach to the sky and uh, and take stuff down. So that, that is, again, if you're just going for damage, then that's the way to go. Force Gate, which I really like. Force Wall no longer blocks allied pathing and has 25% increased range. So it makes, makes the wall way better because not only can you trap opponents, but again, now you can use it offensively and you can use it much more defensively to prevent your ally from getting ganked. Whereas before, you'd have to place it perfectly between them. Now you can just place it on top of them or ahead of them and they can run directly through it. So those are his talents. Almost all of them are good. All of them are amazing. But what I want to show you is if I go back to the show, shop is it is it gonna let me go to uh, skins no you know what let's try it this way let's see if it'll work because sometimes sometimes the shop bugs out when I'm doing this uh, but if I go to shop here and then go over to Tassadar there he is now uh, if we go to the appearance uh, I do want to show off all of his different colors as I normally do in these videos there's gonna be I it says blue it really just changes the colors of his lights this one is says orange but again mostly changing the color of his lights makes him a little bit of a uh, it's more like brass instead of gold kind of cool and then there's gonna be purple as well it doesn't change him a whole lot but what the best skin in the game is holla my man mecha tassadar now this skin could cost a hundred dollars and I would still buy it I seriously love this skin it is my favorite skin in the game and also for my favorite character of the game I couldn't ask for more he does come in standard blue and also, of course, is going to be having... It, it says orange or shows orange, but really it's more of a yellow. It's like Lamborghini yellow, too. And then there's going to be Ferrari red over here as well. Seriously, my favorite skin in the entire game. And just show off his basic quest. Use protective shield on 20 heroes. That one's pretty simple. Deal 20,000 damage to heroes or minions with time warp. Also very simple. And then there's going to be play 10 games. That's how you start to unlock those different tents. Uh, I believe it's tense that they call it, right? Uh, apparently, we're on Uther right now. But uh, either way, that is going to be my main man, Tassadar. I highly recommend playing him if he's going to be free during the week or if, uh, if you unlock him with gold. He is definitely... Definitely the Husky recommendation. So anyway, so if you guys enjoyed it, let me know which hero you would like to see next. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. The Siege Tank and Abathur, they do not use standard horses. Let's go ahead and toggle off the minions. Or toggle them on, I suppose. And let's talk about their spells. Protective Shield. Shield's target ally absorbing 600 damage before breaking. Lasts for 8 seconds. Now, this ability is like sick good like amazingly good so it, it's pretty straightforward you just give an ally a shield there it goes right there and it will break after uh eight seconds i want to see if they they spec into the talent or not but uh uh, looks like they did. Normally, that would disappear after 8 seconds. We'll talk about that talent in a little bit. But you can also throw it on buildings. This is something that not a lot of people actually know. Are those Phoenix that are going around that? Uh, they look a lot like Phoenix, that's for sure. But you can throw it down on buildings, which is awesome. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's something that is... This spell, guys, is like the best save your ally spell in the game. You basically just spam it like Malfurion. He's being dumb. It's one of those spells, and this is the way I like to look at it, is it forces your allies to be less bad. What I mean by that is your ally decides, hey, I'm about to die. I'm going to stay here longer than I should. And you can throw the shield on there to at least allow them to survive a little bit longer. That ability is super straightforward, which is also what I like about him. Now, this ability is very straightforward as well, and it's awesome. It is called Time Warp. For those of you who play StarCraft 2, you're very familiar with this. 75 mana, area of effect, cooldown is 12 seconds, deals 104 damage per second to enemies in target area, and slows attacks and movement speeds by 35%. I want to say that again. Slows attack and movement speed by 35%. So basically, you always want your enemies to be under this. I'm going to show you what it looks like first. You can see it does have quite a long range. I can walk through it just fine without being... Hello everyone, this is H.S. Yeska here, and it is time for another Hero Spotlight, where I show you the very basics of each and every hero in the Heroes of the Storm, and today I'm going to be showing you my main man, Tassadar! Now, for those of you who've been watching the videos on this channel or uh, watching my live streams, you know that I love Tassadar. Look, guys, I know I don't live stream a whole lot, but if you did watch the ones I did, Tassadar is where it's at. He is actually my favorite character in the entire game to play right now. I'm going to be showing you his abilities, kind of giving you a quick overview about him. Not really talking strategy that much because, let's be honest, I'm not the best person to go to for strategy. I think we've known that for a very long time. I mean, look, I'm the captain of Team Low Expectations, so if you're expecting anything, then your expectations are already too high. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and just jump right on in to try him out, and I will show you his ultimates. I will show you all of his abilities, and uh, just kind of tell you what I do like about 
about him. Maybe some strengths and weaknesses. I feel like this is like a, a, a dating website. I'm going to tell you my strengths and my weaknesses and my likes and my dislikes. But uh, here we go. Tassadar, uh, he does ride around on a pony. So he has all normal functionings of a, uh, of a horse. Which uh, I do like to say that because some of the characters like...